to me, uh, I think that this represents a, a fantastic, uh, perhaps, uh, headway uh, or potential port that challenges the formal sector in South Africa. Um, you know, I would venture that the formal sector in South Africa, if anything, should be very scared. Um, and the thing that it should be scared of most is itself. Uh, that we have all of the we have all of the attributes of something that sort of eats itself from the head. Uh, the South African economy is characterized by very high levels of inequality, entrenched uh, unemployment, uh, male-centric rather than uh, uh, female-centric, old rather than young, and each of these attributes is uh, an attribute of fossilization or ossification. And what this represents to me is a challenge to all of that. And it's a desperately needed challenge that the missing element is the absence of flywheel. That if this thing can get scale, if we can find a way that this uh, flywheel uh, takes hold, you are suddenly <laughs> in uh, the grip of a very powerful and healthy animal. My, 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 my frustration, I think that's the word that I'm battling to uh, find, my, my frustration is that the duality of the South African economy uh, and society the system that we have built and replicated is this duality. And so scaling it is all good and well, but only if. And Gerard uh, touches on a number of these only ifs. I think the distinction between a product and a tool, it's a very powerful point that you made. And the distinction between learning and knowing. So there is an obsession, I think, in South Africa with education and financial literacy. But there is a yawning difference between financial literacy and financial knowledge. I might not get invited to any bank, uh, <laughs> bank boardrooms. <laughs> we have a few bankers. I've spotted them. We have, uh, them out. <laughs> we have a bank CEO in the room. <laughs> Imagine if. Imagine what is possible if we could get that the, the chasm between consumption now and the power of compounding <laughs> demonstrated. Now, technology has the ability to do that via virtual reality where you can actually put on a headset and see yourself in the future that you have crafted for yourself by forcing consumption now ahead of deferred consumption, and imagine this 30% uh, internal rate of return. Yeah, there's this poverty of time. But what there uh, isn't a poverty of is a poverty of uh, determination, mm -hmm. prospect, potential. Sylvia, I think the work that you've done here is absolutely extraordinary, and you need to be commended uh, on it. Um, of course, uh, I wouldn't be a good ac academic if I didn't point out what still needs to be done. <laughs> we'll leave that for afterwards. <laughs> One of the things that I've been working very hard on uh, in the last 10 years uh, is building, saving, uh, the capacity to save and the importance of saving in South Africa. And maybe a, a, a last point here is, um, um, you know, Anne and I were uh, exchanging notes uh, on this, and it's, it, it's beyond saving, it's what you do with that saving. So it's all good and well to talk about saving to facilitate investment, but what if that investment is financial? 
then the impact is not nearly as high as if it is a non-financial productive investment. What if the saving is even worse to fund consumption? And many points were made about that, perhaps more politely than I will make it. Uh, what if the saving simply replicates the existing architecture and doesn't replace or challenge, or challenge and replace the existing architecture? And so here is the chance for businesses like mine to change the investment culture and habit and for uh, businesses that have been involved in touching this part of the market but with products that haven't had their potential uh, impact. And ultimately it's experiential uh, and I think uh, Nolofefe points out, learned. Mm -hmm.